Hey my friends, what is good? Derek here from Bomb Socks, back with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So after Mary Margaret's beautiful telling yesterday of the story of Jonah, you got all the context out of the way, and I want to get into a little bit of the meat of what the story of Jonah is for the next couple of days and how it can really be relevant to you and I. So you got Jonah. We don't even know a whole heck of a lot about this guy. It's only four chapters long, his book. Uh, he's a prophet who was called upon to go teach the people in Nineveh. Now, to put this into perspective, Nineveh is the capital of Assyria, okay? Remember, the Assyrian armies are the ones who came in and wiped out the entire kingdom of Israel. The reason why we're gathering today is because they scattered. They did a great job. They were ruthless. They were horrible. They were brutal. The way they did it, they tortured people. This was not an easy mission. This is like a missionary today getting called over to somewhere that is a bitter enemy to you and I. And so for him to be able to do that, this was a very difficult task to do. So I don't want to make excuses for Jonah, but this was not an easy task. In fact, the little map right here might help you out. So Jonah's in Joppa and Nineveh is just a quick 550 miles, quick, you know, 550 miles this direction here. Tarshish is where Jonah is starting to head towards. Uh, in fact, verse number three, it says, Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and he hightailed it out of there. As you can see on this map, 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. It's like, here's your mission call. It's like, that's great. I'm going to go the other direction right there. So it talks about how he is fleeing from the presence of the Lord. It is mentioned there twice in verse number three. When he gets onto the ship, all of a sudden the ship's having problems. And they're just like, who are you? And why are you causing all these problems? Well, you go to verse number 10, it says the men were exceedingly glad when Jonah recognized that he was the problem. The men were exceedingly glad and said unto him, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord. So that phrase is an interesting one because why would anybody go from the presence of God? Here is the presence of God where he will help you and what do you do? You hightail it out of there. I think for me, I know for me, when I start acting on my fears, it's when I am forgetting that God is the one who can help me through stuff and I am too focused on the problem itself. And when that's the case, I want to bail and I want to go the opposite direction. And I really think that's one of the reasons why you see a lot of people leaving the presence of the Lord. It's because they're focusing too much on the problem. Like Jonah has his eyes focused on Nineveh. He's like, Nineveh? Nope, those guys are horrible. I'm out of here. He forgets that there are so many instances in the scriptures where God has been with them. When the presence of the Lord is with you, he will help you. Dozens and dozens and dozens of stories, whether it's David and Goliath or Daniel in the lion's den, or you go into the book of Mormon, Nephi, there's so many ones where the presence of the Lord is with you. He will help you. He says so many times, I am with you. So why would someone leave the presence of the Lord? It's when you focus so much on that other thing that you forget that God is with you. Well, what happens to Jonah? The end of verse 17, a large fish comes in and swallows him and he's in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now you go over to chapter two. Chapter two is only 10 verses long, but I love, it. it's interesting. The bookends of this is verse one. It says, Jonah prayed unto his God out of the fish's belly. From about verses two to nine, you almost forget that he's in the belly of a, of a large fish but you read about this as if you are trying to repent and to change or you're in a difficult situation. You look at some of these verses, like verse number two, I cried by reason of mine affliction. How many of us have done that? We cry by reason of our afflictions unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I and thou heardest my voice. Uh, you click on the word hell, it takes you over to Alma 36, and it shows you very reminiscent things of Alma the Younger as he's going through that. Verse three, thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, the floods encompass me about, and all thy billows and thy waves pass over me. There's some great symbolism there to our trials. Verse four, then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet will I look again toward thy holy temple. It's interesting. All of a sudden we're talking about looking toward the temple. Just a few minutes later, we were in the belly of hell and now you're looking towards the temple. In fact, he says that down again, verse number seven, when my soul fainted within me, 
I remember the Lord. Rather than focusing on Nineveh, he is focusing on the Lord. I remember the Lord. My prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple, which is so cool there. Uh, you go back up just a couple verses previous, verse number five. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. The depths close me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. Now, again, you're thinking about this as he's in this belly of this ginormous fish, a whale, whatever it is. Weeds are wrapped around him. Weeds are things that you do not want to have in your life. Okay, Doesn't take much effort to get them there. So you're encompassed about by the things that you do not want in your life. And what do you do? you focus towards the temple. Verse number six, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou hast brought me up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. You go down to verse number nine, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. You go to these verses again, it's like you almost have to take it out of context a little bit and be like, he's not in the belly of a large fish. This is a man who's going through difficult trials. He's in a hell of his own making. And what does he do? As in chapter one, he was running from the presence of the Lord. Now he is looking toward the Lord and specifically looking towards the temple. There's been a lot of talk about the temple in our last several lessons as you've been studying the Old Testament. Well, and then you go to verse number 10, the Lord spake unto the fish, and the fish vomited out Jonah up upon the dry land. This chapter is kind of a cool one when you read it with ways to be able to get yourself out of those difficulties that you're dealing with. When you got those weeds wrapped around you, what do you do? You focus towards the Lord and you focus towards the temple. Forget about the difficulty, forget about the trial itself, and you focus on the Lord. And as you do that, I believe he will help you. I know that I've seen it in my own life and I know it can work for you and I as well as we take our minds off of the trial and onto the Lord. And that gets us looking towards him, which is one of the greatest blessings we can do in our lives. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing these messages. We love that you do that. Check out our amazingly wonderful, comfortable gospel themed socks at bombsocks.com and we will see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.